Uh, Coach, if you'd like, we'll start with an opening statement, and after Coach is finished, we'll open the floor for questions for him. Okay. Well, first and foremost, we want to thank everybody here in Dayton. Uh, We've just only been in UD Arena for a short period of time. But uh, being in Dayton, being at the hotel, the reception, uh, the way everybody's treating us in a short period of time has been fantastic. And, and uh, it's very easy to understand why there's been more NCAA tournament games uh, in this city than any other place. I believe that's true, right? And uh, I think that's tremendous. As far as for us, I think the thing we think about the most as coaches and as a staff, that the Big Ten prepares you for everything and anything. And and the one thing that it, it totally prepares you for is to never take anything lightly, to have your preparation be as good for one game as it is the other, to build a consistency in your team that comes from that consistency of work and preparation. And that's exactly how we feel about this tournament. I mean, it, it's totally been about getting ready for one game. Obviously, we didn't know who it was going to be till last night. But we spent ample time all week long getting ready for James Madison in Long Island. And, and from last night when that game ended, we were completely centered on what we had to do to play and beat James Madison. We have great respect for them. They're a conference champion. Uh, Matt Brady is an excellent coach. And he's got Mike Dean on his staff, who's one of the best coaches uh, in this game. There, there's no question about it. I followed him at Marquette. Uh, I know what kind of character he has, and I know what kind of uh, players and people he recruited and how he coached them because I got to inherit those guys and, and had some, some, some very fun years early on at Marquette with the, with the young people that we had there. Uh, as a team, they're athletic, they're skilled, they're, they're, they're certainly experienced. When you look at all the fifth year guys that they have, they play very well together. They do a great job of blending their experience with their young freshmen. And it's, it's been really interesting to watch the cohesiveness develop in that team as we've watched the films you know, over the last three days or so, four days, and, and watch them develop their team this year. So we have great respect for James Madison. Questions for Coach, right here. Uh, Coach, I know it doesn't guarantee anything, and you're not going to look too far ahead, but what kind of honor is it for you in this program when you see the President of the United States picture you guys going all the way? Well, I, I think it's nice. I, I haven't seen it personally, heard about it, and uh, I, I think it just, uh, it's really good. But, but I'm also concerned that someone said that he was one in three in his picks before. So you're always going to be, uh, you hope he's right on this one. But uh, we're not going to look too far ahead. I think the most important thing is, is that our guys have been really good about taking what's been said and, and, and not letting it affect them either way, and, and it's not any different right now. Mark Seelig from the Daily News Record. Uh, Matt Brady said he met you maybe a couple years ago at AAU tournament, and he was almost flattered that you knew who he was. Can you just talk about you know what you see as, from him as a coach and kind of what you know about him? Well, I've known of him for a long time since he played for Mike, I believe, at Siena, and, and what he did at St. Joe's. And I know what kind of coach he was. For, I mean, coaches pay attention to coaches because we're always paying attention to programs. So uh, I've always thought he was an outstanding coach. And, and what he did at Marist, I mean, fantastic. And, and uh, you can tell he really develops his players. And I think that's a great trait, great trait for any leader. But you can just see, like when you watch them play against UCLA in a couple of their games at the very beginning of the year to where they are now, it's like two different teams. It truly is. And I think that's a great sign of a coach and a coaching staff and the way that they develop their team. And uh, they're very skilled. They play very well together. They play both ends of the court extremely hard and diligent. And uh, that doesn't happen if you don't have outstanding coaching. Spending the year so highly ranked and the preseason ranking, everything like that, how did that prepare this group to go into this as a number one seed? Mm, we'll find out, but I think the one thing that you would look back at our season, and there has never been a time that this team has not brought a ton of effort and energy, and, and uh, we haven't always played great, we haven't always won, but uh, we lost two games at home, we lost two games on the road, we lost two neutral games, but in none of those games, all right, or the ones that we won, did, did we not show up to play, and I think that's a great sign of maturity, that that's not taking an opponent lightly. That's knowing that you have things to correct and get better at, but it's never coming in feeling like you're entitled or enabled and you just get to show up and play. And uh, when I look around the country and see that our team did that, I think that speaks volumes about their maturity and and how they've handled all of this. Because uh, remember, I mean, a year ago they went from the guys that were veterans in this program went from losing 20-plus games and being four wins short of even qualifying for an NIT appearance, appearance 
to win, having the highest winning percentage in the league the last two years. I mean, so they've done a great job of continuing to stay focused on getting better day after day. I don't think it happens without that. Tom? Hey, Tom. Tom Withers from the AP. I, I know you want to win them all, but can there be a benefit to maybe, you know, a couple stumbles down the stretch like you guys had? Um, I think as long as you're improving from them. And, and uh, uh, we've learned a lot, I think, from Saturday's game against Wisconsin. Just like we learned a lot uh, after we lost at Minnesota coming home for Iowa, and like we learned a lot when we lost to Ohio State. You know, we bounced right back. And, and I don't think if you're, if you're learning, there's no way you go to Michigan and win a game with, with everything that was on the line that day. And, and, and with the, just the tension and the, the, the intensity uh, of the entire place. Uh, you don't win if you're not getting better. So the best thing about this team is, is, is do they learn from their mistakes, do they build on their strengths, and do they know the difference? You know, and that, that's the, you know, you can't take a weakness into a game and say, well, I'll just work on it in the game. You gotta take the weakness to practice into the film room, get it fixed, and see if it can become a strength in the game, and if not, then you gotta stay away from it till you get it there. Now that you guys are actually here, do you see a difference in the way the players are approaching this day as opposed to last year when they were making their first job? No, I, w I wouldn't say that because this has been a little different because for a couple of days of practice, we really focused on commonalities. We focused on improving us. We focused on certain things. We, we, we did very few team sets and did a lot more concepts that, that we felt could play into it. And uh, certainly we're well aware of James Madison's strengths, and we knew Long Island's, but James Madison, uh, with their ability to score inside, you know, with the experience that they have, uh, we, we, were, we were very tuned in to what they were about and trying to put some of those things into practice. But then last night, it just, it just turned it right over, and, and they were sharp in our walkthroughs. And, uh, I mean, there's no question that we're probably going to have to replace the carpet in the, uh, the ballroom at the hotel by the way they were sliding and moving their feet. You know, they're just, they're just into it. And I think that there's, uh, I want them to have fun and I want them to enjoy it. But at the same time, I, I do think they have a very strong business approach to this. Not where it's, not where it's drudgery, but where it's, that there's a great focus. Coach Stephen Prophet from the Breeze. Does the history of a 16 to 1 matchup add any pressure going into this game for you all? Well, I think pressure is whatever, whatever you, however you view it. I mean, you, you, we can look at it like there's been pressure the entire year because we were ranked number one from like three days after the final four last year. Or we can look at it that our guys have used all that to fuel them to make them better. I don't think it's about the seed. I think it's about how good James Madison is. And, 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 uh, I don't know what coach I read said it, but, we said seeds really don't matter. They matter very little right now. He's probably right because there's so much, there's so much parity in the game. And when you're looking at James Madison, you're looking at a battle-tested team. You're looking at a team that can score inside and outside. It's certainly great experience and, and freshmen that are getting better inside of their group. They know how they want to play. They know how they win. So you're focusing on the team and you're focusing on their strengths and you're trying to find some things that you can get after more than you're focusing on the fact that they're a 16 seed and you're a 1 seed. That, that, that's not anything we really spend any time talking about. Uh, hey, Tom. Tom Withers again. Um, Izzo said that he would rather face the Lakers once he got through that Big Ten meat grinder. Did you kind of feel the same way once you were done? No, I wouldn't want to play the Lakers. I mean, I mean, it's, come on, Kobe. I mean, we, uh, we, Victor Oladipo can guard just about anybody, but Kobe's Kobe. Now, in seriousness, um, he, this was an incredibly challenging year, and, and, and last year was, but this year was because we were in the race, we, we, we had a chance to win it the entire way, and then we ended up winning it. So when you do that, there's no question that takes a lot out of you. But, but, but what's happened is it's just built the confidence for these guys. And, and, and we've spent time this week making sure that we're, uh, that we're getting our energy back. Because it does take a lot, you know, and then you turn right around and you go into a conference tournament. So to me, when you're in the, it's, it's just, it's, it's just mental and physical warfare it, 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 for 18 to 22 year olds playing sports. And I don't use warfare loosely with what goes on in this world. I don't mean it like that at all. But when you're out there like that and you've got to bring your best and it's moment by moment, not just possession by possession, when it's pass by pass. Okay, not not just segments of the game. That takes a lot out of you. 
and, 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 and really, the epitome of it was for us the day we won the championship at Michigan, it coming down to we needed, we got 53 rebounds in the game. And we needed all 53 to win the game. And, and because if we get 52 and they get one tip, goes back in, we lose the game. So what you learn is that everything matters. And, that, and that's hard to get to when we're dealing with, 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 with young men like this. But they just keep bouncing back and, re, and, and moving forward, and I love it. Any further questions for Coach? All righty. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.